Well, hey folks, this is Bill with I Ride Tiny House Adventures. I hope you all are having a, a great Memorial Day weekend. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of activities here after a while, after it gets a little cooler. We've uh, all of a sudden had a beginning of a pretty stout heat wave. It's so strange. We almost, uh, which is the way it happens a lot here in Northwest Arkansas, we basically have went from winter to summer. Kind of like, you know, we go to bed one night and it's winter and wake up the next morning and all of a sudden it's summer. Very little spring weather in between this time and that's been kind of been a trend here for the last few years or so. But anyway, we've done some work on the trailer. We installed our panel on the inside and wired up the 50 amp inlet. And I'm going to show you everything that we did and how we did it. And we still have a little bit more to do. But I would like to uh, show you what we've done so far and then cover what we're fixing to do uh, to finish the project before we move on to something else. And I've done an awful lot of research on this as we go along. Talked to a lot of licensed electricians, uh, looked at a lot of YouTube videos, uh, looked up a lot of different uh, rules and regulations and everything. And this is how I ended up with uh, what we are doing here. So First, we're going to cover uh, the basic difference, and I apologize for the movement there. I'm switching hands uh, with the camera here. First, we're going to cover the basic differences between a 30 amp service and a 50 amp service, and we opted to go with a 50 amp service rather than a 30. And I'll cover that right quick. The main reason why we opted to go with a 50 over a 30 was that we're going to be staying mostly in Corps of Engineer campgrounds or federal parks, and most of them offer 50 amp service as well as 30 and because of our uh, age and the fact that we have uh, what a lot a lot of folks refer to as the golden pass if we have to pay any any more at all for the 50 amp service over the 30 it's only maybe a dollar or two a night so it's not enough to concern ourselves with yet we have a lot more power available to us for things that we want to do and for the most part, our trailer is going to be total electric, including the hot water heater. And 99.99% .99 of the time, we will, be, we will be plugged in to shore power. But let me show you just a few little things, and many of you already know the difference between a 30 amp service and a 50, but I'm going to just cover a few things here. This is a, uh, this is a 30 amp cord. This is what would normally screw in uh, to the trailer, would mount to the trailer. It's got a twist lock design, so you twist it on to the male lugs that are on the power inlet. And then you have this uh, threaded collar here that uh, will, will thread down and, and crank down over the uh, threaded part of the uh, inlet, and that holds it in place. Now, you'll notice on the 30 amp inlet, you have three uh, lugs, we might say. Three female lugs here. So what you've got going on here is you have one hot wire, one neutral, and one ground. And the hot wire carries 30 amps. So you have 30 amps available to you. Of course, once it gets into your trailer and it's dispersed between the different circuits in your trailer, um, that's how it's all divided up inside your trailer. Now on a 50 amp service, and here I have an adapter that adapts from a 50 amp uh, power inlet down to a regular 20 amp 110 volt. But let's talk about this end first. On a 50 amp service, you have a total of four wires. You have the three uh, female lugs that you see there, and then you see this tab on the side. Now what you have going on here, you have two hot legs, not one, but two hot legs, a neutral leg, and then this is where your ground leg connects right here on this. So you have four wires coming in. Now they call it a 50 amp service, but technically speaking, you have two hot legs coming in at 50 amps each, 50 amps each. Now what you've got going on with that, if you were to take to arrive at wattage, uh, let's see, what, uh, volts times amps equals watts. So if you take 120 volts times 30 amps, so that figures out to 3,600 watts available to you with this setup with a 30 amp service. If you take two 50 amp hot legs coming in times 120 volts each, that totals 12,000 watts 
not 3,600 watts, but 12,000 watts of power available to you. Now, since our trailer is going to be mostly total electric, even the hot water tank is an electric hot water tank, it'll be a six gallon electric hot water tank. Uh, we'll have plenty of power to run it along with uh, our air conditioner. And of course, we're going to make certain when we wire up everything inside the trailer that the main, the, thing, the items that draw the most power will be separated from one leg to the other. In other words, we won't have the air conditioner on the same hot leg as we would the hot water tank. And those are things that we'll have to keep in mind as we're, uh, as we're wiring up the trailer. Now, let's go out here and take a look at the power inlet right quick. And if it wasn't for being so hot and humid today, and it's still a beautiful day, I'm, I can't complain. I shouldn't complain. I apologize. But last time I looked, the hum humidity was at 100%, and the temperature was 88 degrees. So that means we have a, it really feels like around 98 or so. Now here's the 50 watt, or the 50 amp, I'm sorry, power inlet. And we now have it permanently installed. And it's wired up. And here again, when you look closely at it, you can see your three male lugs there. And then over here to the side, you see that tab there on the side. Now the tab is for the ground. The tab is for the ground. So you have your two hot legs coming in on two of these lugs, and then of course the neutral, hence you have four wires. Now, the 50 amp power inlet is real easy to wire, and I apologize, I've already got it done, so I can't show you how it's coded on the back, but it's real simple, and it's real easy, and I'll even post a link. We got this at eTrailer.com. By the way, eTrailer.com is one of our main go-to places for certain items that we need on the trailer. The other go-to place is, of course, Amazon. I mean, everybody knows about Amazon. But what I like about eTrailer.com, and I will post a link to this particular part on eTrailer.com, most of the items they have for sale, they have a little short video describing the item, even giving you measurements and showing you all the things that you need to know to make sure that that's what you need to, to use on your particular application. And it's real easy to wire this thing up. You have four lugs on the back of it, then you have a sleeve that goes over that once you get everything all wired in. But the, all four of those lugs are color-coded. You have a, uh, let's see, you have a red, a black, with, and the red and the black would be your two hots. Then, of course, you have a, another lug that's color-coded white, which would be your neutral. Then the other lug is color-coded green, which, of course, will be your ground. So, <laughs> you know, unless if you're colorblind, it's going to be awful hard to mess that up. Now let's walk inside the trailer, and I'll show you how we did this. Let me walk back around here. And I don't have a step to step up there. I could do that, but I'm going to go here to the back because I have a makeshift step right here that I can walk in with. And let's see. And then we're going to walk towards the front. Now, here is our panel. Now, this is basically uh, what a lot of folks would call a sub panel. And keep in mind that when we're plugged into the pole, you'll have your 50 amp breaker at the pole right there. And everybody I've talked to says that that's all I need to be concerned with as far as how that goes. But if you'll notice here, the wire's coming in and you can see where I have the wire coming out of the, uh, of the power inlet. This is where it sticks through the wall and I've got it all wired up there. And then I ran it uh, neatly along the, the uh, V in the nose and come in and come up over here on the side. All of this will be covered up eventually with cabinets and such, so uh, don't be too concerned about that. Now first let's talk about the wires coming in, and hope, hopefully you can see them here. Now I can touch this right now because I'm not plugged in, folks. I'm not plugged in. I'm not jumping or nothing. It's, <laughs> it's okay. Just make sure don't ever, ever, ever have the cover off of your panel and go in here and start touching stuff if you're plugged in, but you know, that's common sense. I'm, sh I'm sure everybody knows that. Now, we got this panel at Home Depot. Uh, it's an Eaton brand panel, and we just liked the way it laid out, and the physical dimensions were uh, what we needed to fit the spot that we wanted to put it in. Now, if you see the wires coming in here, of course, there's the green. Let's see. There's the red, and... 
you guys can probably see it better than I can I'm trying to look. There's the black and the white's in there somewhere hidden. Oh, there it is. It's coming right up and going here. Now we know that the white is the neutral. So it comes right up and it ties into the neutral bar right here. This is the neutral bar. Now the red and the black are the two hots and I've got them routed coming around this way, coming back up and then coming right back out around and tied into the two uh, hot buses here. So there's your hot legs there coming in right there. And then of course this is where all the breakers go. Now we have one temporarily mounted here so and we have a, a plug temporarily mounted right now inside just so we can run lights and stuff inside if we need them while we're working here in the trailer. Now over here on this side right here, this is a neutral ground bar kit that we had to buy extra and it was like $10 at Home Depot. Now I've had several opinions from several different electrical contractors and I've researched a lot of stuff but by and large, 90% of all the research that I've done and 90% of all the people I've talked to, they have told me that I have got to keep the ground here separate from the neutral. Now, in the old days, they used to tie the grounds and the neutrals together, but that is a no-no. We do not want to do that. This is what's going to keep you from getting shocked if you have an issue. This ground bar over here. Keep it separate. You will find YouTube videos out there where they married the two, where they ran a jumper across from one to the other. You'll also find a whole bunch of YouTube videos out there from licensed electrical contractors that says that is totally wrong and now they're going to go in and undo all of that stuff. So <laughs> don't, uh, don't, uh, don't marry those two, folks. Don't do that. That's just not a good idea to marry those two. And you'll notice that the neutral ground bar, which came on the panel, of course, is isolated from the metal box. The ground bar, the actual ground bar kit that we attached, and it's designed to go on this way, is attached directly to the box itself. Now, one other thing that I've got to do, and this came after doing all types of research and everything, um, Everybody I talked to, well, here again, 90% of everybody I talked to, talk to told me that for safety's sake, I need to run a ground wire from the ground bar to the frame, which I intend to do. I've already bought the material to do it, but I haven't done that yet. So that's what I will be doing. I will be running a ground bar. I mean a ground wire from the ground bar and I'll probably have it come back out this way, follow along there and I'll come straight down here. I'll drill a hole some down in there. I'll crawl underneath and see exactly where the main uh, piece of the tongue comes in and uh, drill a hole beside it and run the wire down through there. Uh, put a real good eyelet on the end of the, the cable and I got a green one by the way so there won't be no mistake in what it is and I'll attach it to uh, I'll attach it to the frame down there in order to ground this to the frame. But everybody tells me that's what I need to do to make sure that this is uh, uh, safely done. Now, you do see that I have another, uh, I have a box mounted here and it is temporary. I can't stress that enough. It is temporary. I thought I had the proper connectors, but I didn't. So, uh, you know, I've just kind of got this uh, laying through here a little bit. But of course, when I come in with it, and, I, and one of, another thing I'm going to say, the trailer will not move while this wire is hooked up this way. So don't worry about it vibrating down the road or anything. When I get ready to run all of my real circuits, everything will be attached properly to this box by the proper connectors. Every circuit coming in here will be attached properly with the proper connectors to keep the, the uh, vibration issues uh, to a minimum as far as wearing on the wires are concerned. So, anyway, we do have that going on. Now, so we got the neutral here coming into the neutral ground bar. This is off of this uh, temporary outlet that I have mounted down here. So the neutral comes straight into the neutral ground bar. The hot leg for this particular comes right here. It comes around and comes up into this breaker that I've uh, temporarily installed right here. Now, we also have the uh, ground wire that was part of this that is right here and it comes up and attaches to the ground neutral bar right there. 
Now keep in mind, I still have yet to run a ground wire from the ground bar to the frame of the trailer. And that uh, I have all the material to do that and it will be done this weekend. I will have that all done and completed. And uh, that is another safety feature that I'm applying to this. Now this is what everybody has told me to do. And uh, based on a lot of research that I've done, this is what I feel like that needs to be done. Now this particular panel has room for eight breakers or you can use uh, double breakers. You can actually get a breaker that has uh, two breakers in the same size breaker. So you can actually go clear up to 16 circuits if you want to. Now we won't need 16 circuits. In fact, I'm not even positive that we'll need um, eight circuits uh, for all this. But anyway, we've got it here and got the power available to us to run the things that we want to run and maybe some stuff down the road. So anyway, uh, that's the story on that. Now this uh, line that I have coming in here, this, of course, this is number four. They call it SOOW cable. And these are stranded wires. No, I'm sorry, it's not number four. Forgive me, it's number six. Number six, uh, four, four, K, four wires inside, number six, and it's stranded copper. Stranded copper, not aluminum. And uh, anyway, uh, I've got it coming up here, of course, as you can see, and going right in there. And I don't mean to be repeating myself, but uh, keep in mind, I uh, start filming and talking on the fly, and sometimes I forget what I just said. Now, I'm going to walk back out to the tongue of the trailer here for a minute because there's something that I forgot to show you. And I know you're wondering about the generator that's sitting on the, on the nose of the trailer. And that is also something that I discovered that I need to do for safety issues. Now, the generator will be mounted here. Now, this is not a permanent thing. I just kind of set it up here to get an idea. And uh, don't worry about the tongue weight. The generator weighs roughly around 100 pounds or so. Uh, in fact, we're going to need the tongue weight because of the weight we're putting on the back of the trailer. So we have that all figured out. We have everything all added up, and the bias between front and back is going to be correct. Uh, we've already got that all figured out. But one thing I might point out to you, if you think that you want to get an extended tongue so you can mount a generator on front, be certain to order it with this type of jack that has the crank on the front rather than the one that cranks up on top because the one that cranks on the top could get in the way of your generator here. Now, I've got plenty of room here. I've already experimented with uh, the van hooked up to it and turning tight corners, stuff like that. I'm not gonna bang into the back of the van or nothing. The generator has plenty of clearance everywhere, so there's no issues there. But one thing I do wanna point out, we've been talking about grounding issues and things like that. And uh, you'll notice here on the front of this particular generator, and by the way, I love this generator. Uh, <laughs> I hear all kinds of comments. Oh yeah, they're great, but they're loud and they're this and they're that. I had it fired up a minute ago. My wife and I both were standing on either side of it and we could carry on a conversation and we didn't have to yell at each other. So there you go. Uh, I'm not, uh, I don't think it's all that loud. It's, of course, it's louder than a Honda, but I paid uh, $300 for this and it's a 4,000 watt generator, 3,500 continuous watts, and a, uh, what is it, a 1,200 watt, uh, let me see, no, 2,000 watt Honda is $1,200. I can buy a lot of these for the price of one Honda, but I'm not picking on the people that own Honda generators. Don't get me wrong. Don't start commenting and saying that, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about and stuff. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. This is the way I went because I wanted this much power and quite honestly, my pocketbook could not handle the price of a Honda. And if this thing lasts me a year, awesome. I'll go get another one. There you go. That's how that works. But the thing about it is, this is only here for emergency situations. 99.99% of the time, I won't even be using this thing. If I fire it up at all, most of the time, it'll just because be because I need to fire it up. Or if I'm going down the road and I have a low tire, I can fire it up, plug in my compressor that I'll have mounted, permanently mounted in the back of my van, and I can air up my tires. You know, that's what it's there for. And this is, I just had the trailer designed to put it here. So there, that's, uh, that's why we're doing that. So don't get all excited <laughs> like I am. Anyway, uh, one thing I do want to point out about this, and everybody told me that I need to do this as well, uh, I need to have the generator itself grounded to the frame of the trailer. 
and then there's another step we take beyond that as well but we'll talk about that in a second if you'll notice right here this is a ground stud right here and it's got a nut on it that you can take off and slip a cable over that with an eyelet on it and then screw it down so we will be coming off of that when we permanently mount the generator we'll be coming off of that and then bringing a strap over here and mounting it on the uh, side of the tongue somewhere in here we'll tuck it in nice and neat in addition to that when i when i mount the strap permanently to the trailer here the ground strap for those times when i would be running the generator and we're not plugged in somewhere and i'm sitting stationary i will have a temporary ground rod that i carry with me that i can drive into the ground and wherever i end up with this stud somewhere in here that the ground strap will be attached to on this stud here i will be able to mount the temporary ground rod cable to that stud and run to the ground and uh, so this is my plan on how to do that so this is what we're going to do down the road once we figure out exactly how we want to permanently mount this generator now as far as covering up the generator as we're going down the road uh, i'm not going to go with a with a uh, diamond plate uh, box or anything like that um, I just don't want to add that much more weight because I am you know right to where I need to be so probably what I will do is uh, I know champion makes a uh, cover a slip cover that slips over these things I need to check one out and see if it uh, if it can be tied down tight enough to stay on as we're going down the road if not we have several uh, uh, folks around here that uh, make awnings and stuff like that and I'm sure I can find somebody that can make me a slip cover that'll have the proper tie down so I could tie it down and it stay on while we're going down the road so uh, those are things that uh, those are things that we'll address as we get closer to this particular uh, facet of this uh, project here so anyway uh, this is what we have going on and uh, and I give me just a second here I'm going to uh, mount the uh, the panel cover back on the panel and then we will plug this thing in and show you how it works be right back okay I've got this plugged in now to the 50 amp power inlet now I do need to point out this is an adapter uh, and it adapts from a 20 amp service to fit the 50 amp power inlet now even though I have a 50 amp power inlet mounted here I'm only feeding it with 20 amps right now so I've got only 20 amps available right now which is all I need just for what we're doing right now but this is a simple adapter that adapts to this they call it a dog bone a lot of you already know that now you know that there's two hot legs going into the panel and you know that this cable coming in that's connected to it only has one hot leg on it well what they've done they have an internal jumper inside this part of it that uh, runs a jumper wire over to the other hot leg so that it will light up both sides of the panel on the inside so that's how that works so when you use a 30 amp dog bone adapter you can even get a dog bone adapter that goes from a 30 amp to a 50 amp uh, even though you have a 50 amp set up inside your trailer when you're plugging into a 30 amp common sense will tell you you've only got 30 amps available not 50 or really 250s which is what you'd have with a typical 50 amp service so just keep that in the back of your mind now we're going to go step inside the trailer and uh, we'll uh, do one more quick little test right quick hang on okay i've got it plugged in outside and i've got uh, the cover back on the panel here uh, before i turn it on the breaker right now is in the off position, the one breaker that we have in there. Now, I do want to stress, I still do not have the ground strap ran from the ground bar inside the panel down to the frame. Where that really comes into play is later on when we run all of our circuits. If for some reason we had a uh, hot wire touch a metal box or something like that, by having the ground strap run to the frame, it would automatically trip the breaker. So that's what that's for right now we only have one circuit coming off of it and uh, you know it's still I'm going to do it no matter what and it's the next thing I'm going to do when I get done filming but uh, it's not uh, it's important but it's we can get by with doing this quick little test right quick for you to show you what we've got going on here so 
My assistant has showed up <laughs> to help. Has yeah, up. <laughs> your assistant, my assistant has showed up, and uh, she's just kind of chillaxing there, just relaxing and taking it easy. She's a little warm right now because it's so humid today, of course. And we've got a fan pointing at her here, and that's a real that fan really works good too. It creates quite a breeze, let me tell you. So we're going to flip it on so she can cool off. So hang on just a second. Here we go. Up here to the breaker. Yay! <laughs> now she's got some air. Yeah. It's a working. All right. Does that feel better, dear? Yes. Yes? It's awesome. Yes? Yes. Well, here in a little while maybe a couple hours or so we're going to throw the kayaks in the van and we're going to run down to the lake and uh, going to have a race actually she can outrun me in the kayaks everybody yeah she's pretty fast <laughs> i have a hard time well that's true no not quite a year yeah last time we went kayaking was last october anyway we're gonna we'll be fixing to do that here after a while i hope everybody enjoyed the video i hope you learned something from it and uh, I know I've learned a lot by all the research that I've been doing, and I will post a, a link or two for you that you can look at too. There's another a YouTube video out there that explains the 50 amp service a whole lot better than I can. And we'll also post a link to the 50 amp power inlet that we got through eTrailer.com. And you can look at it there and scroll on down. When you look at the part and everything, you can scroll on down and you will see where they have a demonstration video describing the product. And that's what I really, really like about eTrailer.com. So anyway, y'all take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon. Have a good weekend, and have a good week coming up. Bye-bye now.